Every new Monster Hunter game and expansion introduces many brand new monsters to the series. They also bring back monsters from previous games. Oftentimes these monsters are updated with new attacks, variations and even music. But as the series receives more and more entries and mechanics are introduced and dropped, it becomes harder and harder to bring everyone back. So in this video we will be discussing prominent monsters who have never returned in any recent game. Since we are in the 5th generation of Monster Hunter, I count anyone who wasn't included in 4 Ultimate, Generations Ultimate, World, Iceborne, Rise, as well as the story's spin-off games. Before we get into things, a quick disclaimer. Sunbreak has entered its new cycle and is approaching release. It's entirely possible this video will age badly and one of the monsters mentioned makes a return. I also want to mention that I will not be discussing Japan exclusive monsters in spin-offs like Monster Hunter Online or Frontier, so keep that in mind before we proceed. Monster Hunter 3 introduced underwater combat and the Leviathan class of monsters. These are amphibious monsters who can fight in the sea and on land. Some of you may know Royal Ludroth, Mizutsune, Lagayakris as they've appeared in a couple of recent games. Gobo is exclusive to Monster Hunter 3 and its expansion. He is round and purple, and resembles an anglerfish with a lantern hanging from his forehead. You can normally find him disguised as some reeds in the ground, where he catches prey off guard. Gobo likes to dive at you while underwater, showing impressive maneuverability. He has spikes on his body he can extend and retract. His tail can inflict paralysis. His lamp can flash and stun you, and he is capable of sucking you in and spitting you out. Gobel resides almost exclusively underwater, but if you bring a frog, you can use it to fish him out. From there, he stays on land for a while, becoming incredibly slow and predictable. Why hasn't Gobel returned? I have a theory. Underwater combat was not in Monster Hunter Possible 3rd, and so some monsters were omitted from this release, namely Lagayakris and of course Gobel. The flagship of Portable 3rd is Zenoga, who you can kind of argue is a stand-in for Lagayakris, both being blue monsters with four legs. Likewise, Gobel also has a stand-in. Nibble Snarf is a leviathan who resides in the desert. He starts off fully submerged, disguised as a sand dune. While fighting him, he stays partially submerged and has impressive maneuverability. Very similar to Gobel already, and that's not mentioning Nibble Snarf also has a mechanic where he can be fished from the ground. My theory is that because Gobel's fight is so reliant on underwater combat, something that has not returned in recent games, as well as the fact that Nibble Snuff can function anywhere if there's sand, Capcom probably decided that Nibble is a suitable alternative and they don't need to take the effort to bring Gobel back. Nibble Snuff is also in Generations, while Gobel is nowhere to be seen. If you've played World, you probably know the Jackalakas very mischievous creatures native to the New World. For Ultimate and Generations Ultimate players might be familiar with the NPCs Charcha and Kayamba. Three Ultimate players are incredibly familiar with them because they are the Hunter's NPCs in this game. Charcha and Kayamba are known as Chakalakas. They are small humanoid creatures who are classified as Linians. They were introduced in the second generation and are highly aggressive, charging at you, throwing bombs, and even placing fake shiny drops that actually explode. They haven't returned as common enemies in any mainline or plausible must Hunter game. Now even if we ignore Charcha and Kayamba, the Chakalakas are not entirely forgotten as they do appear in Monster Hunter stories as common enemies. The one who is forgotten is their king. In his introduction, the King Chakalaka was summoned if he killed a number of Chakalakas on a quest, but in Freedom Unite he was made into his own monster and thus will spawn on his own. King Shakalaka is bigger, he wears a grill on his head, and he swings around a giant roasted chicken. He can easily combo you with small hits that add up very quickly, and he can spit fire from the grill. He is also capable of getting the other Shakalakas to throw barrel bombs. King Shakalaka probably hasn't returned for the same reason we don't see Shakalakas anymore, which is... I'm not sure actually. Capcom has never said why. The Shakalakas are not common enemies in any of the main games anymore. This might be because 3 Ultimate established Charcha and Kayamba as being friendly. Even the Jackalakas in World will assist you in fighting monsters sometimes. In any case, I am not sure if either of these guys will return.
Monster Hunter 3 launched with 18 monsters, a very small amount considering the previous game had around 70. However, most of 3's monsters were brand new, and several felt like they had taken ideas from previous monsters. Uragan, for instance, feels like they took the basic ideas behind Gravios and made a brand new monster. It seems like Capcom also did this with Kezu, and Giganox is the result. Giganox is a flying wyvern introduced in Monster Hunter 3. He is pale with a blood red underside, and he has a similar body structure to Tigrex, and resembles a leech. An interesting thing about Giganox is that his tail resembles his head, and he glows in the dark. He doesn't have eyes either. Like Kezu, he is stretchy and can lunge his neck at you. Giganox can also poison you by spitting or releasing dangerous gas. When enraged, his body hardens and he becomes a darker shade of purple. He is surrounded by baby versions of himself known as Giggies, who will latch onto you and drain your blood. During the fight, he can also lay more. Giganox's subspecies, Baleful Giganox, is a yellowish colour and makes use of paralysis. When enraged, he turns blood red. I believe Giganox has not returned outside of the third generation because the developers believe he's too similar to Kezu, and judging by polls, Kezu is much more popular in Japan. For this reason, games like 4, Generations and Rise take the effort to include Kezu, but not Giganox. You guys know Vespoids, right? Those annoying bugs that interrupt and paralyze you while you're fighting the bigger threats. Well, I've had enough. I'm going to kill them all. Man, that's a lot dead. <laughs> we sure should- Oh my god, what is that? The Vespoid Queen was introduced in Monster Hunter Freedom Unite. She is a giant Vespoid that will only appear when you kill a large number of smaller Vespoids. Due to sensing her hive is being threatened, Vespoid Queen attacks very similarly to the smaller Vespoids, but her damage is massively increased. She can also spray a dangerous fluid that increases the attack rate of other Vespoids in the area while lowering your own defense. If you have trouble beating her, she is very vulnerable to flash bombs. My guess as to why a Vespoid Queen has never returned is because she's a pretty basic monster. She only has two attacks, and with her somewhat cryptic unlock conditions, she feels more like an easter egg than an actual monster. For Ultimate revisited the idea of giant bug monsters with the Celtus and its queen, so perhaps for that reason Capcom does not see the need to bring back the Vespoid Queen, who is vastly inferior in terms of design and moveset. Lao Shan Lung is a giant dragon that makes its way through a fortress. You either have to stay or repel him by doing enough damage and stopping him from tearing the fortress down. The fight is pretty unique, and he is one of the first giant monster fights in the whole series. The footage I'm using is from Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate, so obviously Lao is not forgotten. No, the monster I want to talk about is Shen Gaoran. Shen Gaoran is a giant enemy crab introduced in Monster Hunter 2. Like Lao, he advances on the fortress and you have to stop him. Unlike Lao, Shen Gaoran will actually try and kill you. He will often stop and slam his claws down at you and spit acid breath. Shen Gaoran can also be fought in the town, which some of you may know as the Battle Quarters. Lao Shen Lung last appeared in Freedom Unite and didn't appear until two generations later all the way until Generations Ultimate, which was an anniversary title. It seems like Capcom doesn't like bringing him back too much. His fight is very specialised and he requires his own special arena. Lao Shen Lung is iconic for being the first giant monster, but Shen Gaoran doesn't have that going for him, so it's uncertain when we will next be able to battle him due to the amount of effort it takes to implement him. That being said, he is actually in Generations Ultimate, you can find his corpse in the Jurassic Frontier. Monster Hunter Frontier was an MMO spin-off of the series that began as a PC port of Monster Hunter 2. It has many original monsters and mechanics and received regular updates for years before finally being shut down in December 2019. Two Frontier monsters were included in Monster Hunter Freedom Unite, Lavasioth and Hypnocatrice. Hypnocatrice is a bird wyvern with a very unique design, covered in feathers with a large beak. 
he fights by biting you, swinging his tail around and flapping his wings. He can also release gas that makes you fall asleep. In the main series, Hypnocatrice is exclusive to Freedom Unite, unlike Lavasiov who has made two more appearances as of late. The reason for this is reportedly that Frontier players were angry that the monsters from that game were coming to the main series. After all, they were actively paying a subscription to play Frontier, which at the time wasn't as robust as it later became. And so from their perspective, the exclusive content should stay exclusive as they were paying more for it. As a result of this, Frontier monsters stayed exclusive to Frontier, and are no longer officially fightable. I personally am not 100% sure if this is the exact reason. It's also a possibility that the main series developers only included the Hypnocatrice and Lavasio to advertise Frontier, and at the time didn't have any further intentions for them. In any case, Lavasio appeared in Generations and World, and Hypnocatrice has yet to make an appearance. This might be due to the fact Hypnocatrice isn't really that unique of a monster. Design-wise, he looks cool, but in terms of moveset, he fights almost exactly like young Garuga, but with the ability to inflict sleep rather than poison. Most players who know the tower probably know it as the place where you fight rare species of monsters. Silver Rathalos, Molten Tigrix, Lucent Nagakuga. In recent games, it's simply a small arena, but in the older games, it was a full-fledged map you could explore, where you could fight several strong monsters. One of these is Yamasukami. Despite being a giant floating octopus, Yamasukami is classified as an elder dragon. He is known for his ability to float despite not having wings or anything to propel him. It's believed the gas within his body keeps him in the air. Yama is fought exclusively at the tower. In Monster Hunter 2, you had to physically chase him up the tower, battling him in multiple zones until you reach a final phase, but Freedom Unite has him stay in one zone. He attacks by swinging his tentacles at you and launching great thunderbugs capable of stunning you. He can spin rapidly in place and the only way to dodge is by ducking. Yama has a deadly attack where he slaps two tentacles down. If you don't deal enough damage, he begins sucking you in, which is an instant kill unless you have feline moxie. If you throw tranquilizer bombs at him during this move, he falls down and you can freely hit him. Yama is normally out of reach for Bade Master weapons, so your best chance to hit him is when he attacks with his tentacles. Like Lao Shen Lung and Shen Garen, Yama Tsukami has probably not been brought back due to the fact he needs a specialised form of the tower to function properly. While you could fight him elsewhere in the tower in Monster Hunter 2, it seems the developers decided this wasn't necessary or even good, so now he resides in a modified room in the tower. So the best way to fight him is in a map that requires its own development time. In any case, Yama has not been seen since Freedom Unite, and the tower has not properly been a thing since 4 Ultimate, so it's unlikely we will see him for a long time. Logiacris was believed to be the cause of earthquakes plaguing Moga village. After killing him, it's discovered the real cause is the elder dragon Sadius. Sadius is a ginormous glowing whale-like dragon with a beard and two giant horns. One of the horns is growing into his eye causing him immense pain. To relieve it, he bashes his horns against ruins below Moga, and that's what causes the earthquakes. You battle him exclusively underwater. The first part of the fight has you follow him down a long cave. This phase is reminiscent of Shen Gaoren and Lao Shen Lung, but it's different because you have to break the beard or you fail the quest by the time he reaches the end of the cave. Eventually, you reach the final zone and Sadius will become much more aggressive, he can perform attacks similar to Lagiacris, and he can shoot lasers. When enraged, he glows a different colour. Do you remember how they removed the parts where you chase Yamatsukami up the tower in Freedom Unite? Well, they did the same for the Sadius subspecies. Goldbeard Sadius has a different colour, both his horns have grown into his eyes, and he is much more aggressive, having his own unique attacks. His fight starts off in the final area, 
so there's no chasing him through the cave. The reason Sadius hasn't returned is because underwater combat is still exclusive to Monster Hunter 3 and 3 Ultimate. Sadius did not appear in Monster Hunter Portable 3rd. Like the Gobel, he was replaced with a different Elder Dragon with similar properties, the Amatsu. Until underwater combat makes a return, it is unlikely we will ever see Sadius again. Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate introduced two brand new monsters, Brachidios, the flagship monster, and a new black dragon, the Diamorellis. Dia is an elder dragon who resides in an area known as the Tainted Sea. He resembles Fatalis, but Dia is much different in that he is much larger, cannot fly, and lives in the ocean. He has magma flowing through his body that he expels through his wings. There are glowing sections on his body that are massive weak points and can be broken. Throughout the fight, Dia Morales will move between the ocean and land. While underwater, you can access weak points at higher areas of his body. He generally fights like Fatalis, using bite attacks, swinging his tail around, and launching fireballs. Dia Morales can also use his wings to launch meteors at you, which serve as hazards throughout the fight. Dia Morales canonically cannot leave the ocean for too long, because his body will overheat. In addition to his size and weak point position working hand in hand with underwater combat, it's safe to say we won't see him in the mainland games until underwater combat can make a return. The monsters mentioned in this video have yet to return to any of the recent games. The reasons for this are a mixture of development priorities, major game mechanics never returning, and some monsters just not being favoured as much compared to others. Giganox, Sadius, Gobel, and Dia Morales have similar versions of themselves in later games, so it's possible Capcom doesn't see the need to bring them back, especially because three of them require a completely different combat system. King Shakalaka and the Vespoid Queen are glorified easter eggs. Yamatsukami and Shengaorun need their own specialised arenas and development time to get right, and Hypnocatrice has a myriad of reasons for why he has never returned. Ages ago, I made a video where I insinuated that Gormagala was one of these forgotten monsters. It was a bit silly because Gore has actually appeared in Generations Ultimate, which is a very recent game. It did end up giving me the idea to talk about monsters that are actually forgotten though. Which of these guys would you like to see back and why? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching this video, remember to like and subscribe, and check out some of my other videos too.